Well, good evening, class, and welcome to lesson 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. Um, this lesson is called Transforming Formulas, and every year, um, students tend to think that this is a really hard lesson, um, and it shouldn't be. Transforming formulas basically involves taking equations um, and uh, and solving them, just like we've been doing with all of the other stuff uh, in Chapter 7. Uh, the only difference is you have more variables around. So you're going to have less numbers, usually, in formulas, and you're going to have a lot more letters. But all the steps and all the methods are exactly the same. So let me give you an example. All right. So let's take the equation um, 16 is equal to, um, we'll make this easy, we'll just say 4 times w. Okay. Well, how would you solve this? Well, you know the answer to this. Um, to solve this, you've got to get w by itself. So it's a one-step equation. You've got to get rid of the times 4. You do that by dividing by 4. Right? Okay, and that's the way I want you to show the work as a fraction. Well, if you do it to the right side, you've got to do the same thing over here to the left side. So divide that by 4. Okay? You get a little fruit ninja here. The 4s cancel out. You get w equals 16 over 4, which is equal to 4. Okay, and there's my final answer. And we like to put the variable in front a lot of times, so we just reverse it. We'll say w is equal to 4, and that's the answer. Okay, well, let's try the same exact problem, but this time let's start with a equals length times width, which you probably will recognize as the area formula for a rectangle. Okay, now I want you to solve this equation for w also. Okay, notice instead of the 16, 4, I've got other variables in here, right? Well, all right, let's just stop and think about this. So I want you to solve for the W, the, the, the one that I circled in blue. All right, well, what am I doing with the W and the L? I'm multiplying them, right? So if I want the L to go away, what's the opposite of multiplying by L? Divide by L. And if I divide the right side by L, what do I got to do to the left side? Divide it by L, right? See how basically I'm doing the exact same thing that I just did on the left? All right, and sure enough, what do I get? I get A over L is equal to W. And actually, this is a new formula. If I was going around and I knew the area of a bunch of rectangles and I knew their lengths and I wanted to figure out the widths, that's what you would do. You would take the area and divide by the length and you'd find the missing number that must have been multiplied. All right? This is called transforming a formula. Okay? Now, usually the problems that you see in your book are going to be written, most of the things in your book are written in black. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, show you an example of a problem. Um, so your equations are going to look like this. So you have five um, a, and I'll put that in a second because I'm going to switch colors, plus 7 uh, is equal to b. Okay? And they'll put the uh, indicated letter in red. And they'll say solve for the red variable. All right. Well, this is, um, again, we're going to do the exact same stuff to solve this equation that we would if it was all numbers. Don't worry about the fact that you have a b over here. Okay? Um, so first thing first, uh, sad map tells me to get rid of subtraction and addition first, so that'll be get rid of the plus 7 before I come back and get rid of the times 5. So I do that by subtracting. I do it on both sides. Draw the bar. Notice I put the minus 7 a little bit to the right because it's not a like term with the b, so it's going to be uh, two terms over here. We get the fruit ninja. I get 5a on the left is equal to b minus 7 on the right. Okay? Now, I don't have a by itself yet, so now I have to get rid of the times 5, so the second step is to divide it. So I divide both sides by 5, and I get a, which is actually the red variable. I'll go ahead and put it in red again. I get a equals b minus 7 all over 5. Now that may not look very simple, um, and let's talk about whether we can simplify this. Okay, b and minus 7, well one's a letter and one's a number, so those can't be combined at all. Those are not like terms. And you're dividing by 5, um, but both the b and the negative 7 are divided by 5. In fact, we ran into this earlier in the year. This was that implied grouping, even though you don't see the parentheses. It really, there are really parentheses there. Um, and so that's it. We've solved it. We've gotten the variable that was indicated by itself, and everything else is over on the right side. Okay? That's it. That's all we're going to be doing um, with these formulas. Okay? Um, let's look at a couple more uh, famous formulas that we see a lot of. One of the more uh, famous um, equations that you're going to have in seventh grade uh, with Mr. Johnson, uh, or some of you have already had it probably uh, in seventh grade with Mr. Johnson, is D is equal to R times T. 
By the way, um, we have separate variables. We can put a dot between the R and T to imply the multiplication, but any two letters next to each other are just like when you have a number and a letter next to each other. It's automatically implied to be multiplication, so you don't have to. You can just say D equals RT. Okay, and this is the formula, of course, for the distance something travels is equal to the rate of speed that it's, it's traveling times the time for which it's traveling. Okay, so if you're going 20 miles an hour for three hours, okay, on a bike, you're going to go... Uh, 60 miles. Okay. Whereas if you're driving 60 miles an hour for a half an hour, a half times 60 would be 30 miles. Okay. Now, if I want to solve this equation for the rate, then all I'm going to do is divide both sides by t. Okay. And I will get r. The t's cancel out, and I get r is equal to the distance divided by the time. Which, if you think about it, is exactly how we compute or measure speed. We measure, in fact, when we say speed, we usually say miles per hour. Okay, miles is a distant unit, and per means we're dividing it by the time, which is in hours. Okay, so um, I could have also solved this equation. It'll always tell you what to solve for. I could have solved it for t if I wanted to. Then I would have just divided both sides by r. So I'd start with d equals rt. This time, divide out the r, and you'll find that the distance divided by the speed is equal to the time. Okay, which would make sense. Suppose I have to drive um, 300 miles. Uh, to Columbus, Ohio, and that's a little longer than that, so let's see, 300 miles would get me to about Cleveland, probably, um, and I'm going to be driving 60 miles an hour, how long is it going to take me to go? So I'd put 600 in for distance, I would divide by, uh, I'm sorry, 300 for the distance, I would divide by 60, and I would find out that that would take about 5 hours, okay? And 5 hours would actually get me somewhere between Columbus and, uh, and, uh, and Cleveland. Okay, um, let's do one more equation, um, just so you can see another example, and it's one of my favorite equations. Uh, it turns out if you're changing uh, Celsius degrees, like if you go to someplace like Canada and or Europe, and you see the temperature in Celsius, and you want to convert it to something you're more familiar with, the equation to do that is F is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32. Okay, so you take whatever the Celsius temperature is, you multiply by 9 fifths, you add 32 to it, and that'll give you the Fahrenheit degrees. Okay, so um, let's say that you're traveling in Canada and they say the weather is going to be 14 degrees today. And you want to know, does that mean to wear a coat? Can you wear shorts? You know, you're not sure. So you're going to take that temperature and you put it in. You say 9 fifths of uh, 14. Um, and let's see, let's just do this quick. 9 fifths times 14 plus 32. Okay, and then we'll, we'll get to what we're actually doing this lesson in just a second. So let's see, that comes out to be 9 times 14 is uh, 36, carry the 3, 126 over 5 plus 32. Okay, 5 goes into 126, it goes into 12 twice, it goes into 26, 5, you get a little bit left over. Uh, we'll just say about 25 plus 32. So that means it's going to be about 57 degrees. So you probably don't want to wear shorts, but you don't need a big winter coat either, okay? It's kind of like a nice uh, fall or maybe a, a, a nice spring day. All right. Now, what I'd like to do with this equation, okay, so that's what the equation does. I'd like to change this equation for somebody coming from Canada to our country, and they want to change our Fahrenheit degrees into Celsius. All right. So let's solve this formula for C for them. All right, so we're going to solve this equation. We have 9 fifths times C plus 32. Just like before, sad map opposites and balance tells me to subtract the 32 first. Okay, when I do that, Fruit Ninja, I get 9 fifths times C is going to equal, again, F and 32 are not um, like terms, so I'm going to put them like that. Okay. And that's what I do. And now, finally, the next step to get rid of 5 ninths, that's a fraction. So I can get rid of both numbers at the same time if I just multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, you should recall that from when we did it before. Now, this is a little tricky. I've got to multiply the whole side by 5 ninths, so I do have to put parentheses in. Okay, now the 9's cancel out over here, the 5's cancel out, and I'm left with just C. And I get the equation 5 ninths times F minus 32. Okay, so if I want to know what room temperature is in Celsius, Take 70 degrees and put it in here, okay, and then multiply by 5 ninths, okay? And I think you'll get, a, I believe it's about 22 degrees, okay? All right, so that is transforming formulas. So really, don't get freaked out by the fact that there's extra variables around. 
What we're doing mathematically in terms of solving the sad map, the opposites, and the balance is exactly like what we've done before. I'll go ahead and put a box around this. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes. So I will see you in class tomorrow, and we will practice these. Take care, everybody.